everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the orchids that we have in bloom at the end of the month of September. Now I have most of my orchids currently in bloom that have been in bloom for September. I will be showing new orchids for the most part. I don't want to include ones that I've included lots and lots of times in previous videos or have done specific videos on. So these are mostly going to be ones that I haven't shown you guys um, too much of recently. There are a couple that haven't fully opened all their buds yet but I wanted to show you anyway because they're nearly there and we've still got a really nice display to look at. So I think it's worth including them in this video. And with that said, let's get started. It's been quite a good month for blooms, as you can see. So the first orchid that I wanted to talk to you about for this month is this glorious Bulbophyllum. This is the Bulbophyllum Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. And I did film this earlier in the month when it had just opened and was still perfectly fresh. I'll put some of that footage up on screen. It's been open for about three weeks now and it is starting to fade. As you can see, the tails are kind of the first bit to go. So I'll put that footage up on screen of when it was freshly opened. It's an absolutely stunning, stunning orchid. It's huge and it actually has to hang pendant from one of my shelves because it puts out a beautiful pendant flower spike. One thing that I'd like to mention about this orchid is that although it's absolutely magnificent, and it's definitely not as pungent as some Bulbophyllums can be, it does have a slightly unpleasant fragrance. And I spent quite a long time when this had first opened up, well, it wasn't even fully open yet. It still hadn't um, completely opened its little, are these the sepals? I think they're the sepals. Um, and I was looking around everywhere for what was rotting in my grow room. It smelled like rotten fruit. Now it didn't smell like, so I've heard some Bulbophyllums can smell like rotten meat didn't smell that bad, um, it did just smell like someone had left a banana in my grow room and it had gone off, uh, or gone off apple juice, you know that kind of fizzy, sharp, sickly sweet smell, it's really difficult to describe, but with a hint of mushroom, definitely something a bit fungusy about this one. If you go up and stick your nose in it and take a sniff, it's not the most pleasant experience and it did make me gag quite strongly. Um, but you don't actually notice it at all from a distance, it's just when you're kind of hovering around near it, especially in very bright light, that it does hit you. But my one definitely smells not particularly nice, but again, it's not a smell that fills the whole grow room and I definitely can't notice it while I'm sort of away from it. It's only when you get up close you can smell it. So one thing that's really unique about vulva films is their mobile lips. So they have kind of a, a really interesting mobile lip that just kind of bounces and sways when you move it and there's lots of um, footage on the internet of like slow motion lip bouncing. Um, I won't be able to do that quite with my camera but uh, I'll try and give you a little bit of a, a show of what it kind of looks like when they're moving and I guess this is to encourage pollinators maybe to go a little bit deeper in that it kind of opens up. I'm not entirely sure but it's a really interesting characteristic feature of Bulba Films. And this is an absolutely stunning, huge display. I wouldn't be put off from getting it from the smell. I just wouldn't go and stick your nose in and smell it. Just um, when it's blooming, be aware that it might smell a little bit. So don't sniff it really. Just um, as long as you're not intending to sniff it, it is absolutely fine. It doesn't permeate the grow room. Don't notice it from a distance at all. It's not that strong. It's just if you happen to um, get up close to it that it's a bit offensive. So I think that it is a Bulbophyllum worth having, even if you are a bit sensitive to fragrance, um, because it's not gonna be as bad as some of those Bulbophyllums that, that we know of um, that can smell really awful. So if you're interested in Bulbophyllums and want the magnificent flower display, but don't want the kind of horrible stench, then this is quite a nice um, intermediate because it, it does have a bit of a smell, but you wouldn't notice it unless you were gonna go and sniff it. Next up we have this absolutely beautiful Miltoniopsis flower that you can see in front of you. This is an Eric Young Foundation Miltoniopsis hybrid and on this flower spike we have two flowers facing in opposite directions. I think this hybrid is absolutely beautiful. I love the kind of raspberry ripple uh, waterfall lip that it has with the very nice contrasting dark velvety petals and sepals. Absolutely beautiful. I really, Miltoniopsis are one of my favourite orchids. I love growing them. We only have two flowers on this one, but 
The Eric Young Foundation hybrids I've noticed tend to produce very huge flowers, but less of them. Now I don't know if this is because mine is still quite young. This is only my second flowering of it. Um, so it could just be that they are young and that this will change. We do have another spike just behind it here, but that one only actually has one bud. It tends to be a trait that I've noticed actually. My Eric Young hybrids produce much bigger flowers than my standard kind of garden centre hybrids um, but they just don't seem to produce as many I guess it's a trade-off but I love the form of the Miltoniopsis I love how um, circular the top half of the flower is if you see what I mean how these uh, petals are curled back giving it a really nice rounded like almost lion-like uh, appearance I think it's really really beautiful so showy and so fragrant as well so that is unfortunately a hybrid that I've got the wrong tag in because I must have mixed them up when I was repotting them. Uh, so it says it's not Noirmont, um, it's flowered, it definitely isn't. The Noirmont one had like a black, uh, very, very dark, uh, it was very beautiful, um, but this isn't the Noirmont. So I'm not sure what this ID is, unfortunately. We're going to have to wait for all of them to flower before we can get a definite ID for this one again, unfortunately, but it's so beautiful. And all my other Miltoniopsis have spikes at the moment, so we shall soon find out which one this is. Next up we have my beautiful Phalaenopsis Bellina Red Apple. And this is one of the ones I got from Orchid Garden in my Orchid Garden haul. And it's opened up, we've got two buds at the moment, and it's absolutely beautiful. It does remind me a lot of the Samira, actually. Uh, the form isn't quite the same as the standard Bellina varieties that I'm kind of more used to seeing. It does look a lot like the Samira, but it's really, really beautiful and has a really nice fragrance. It's not exactly what I was expecting from the Bellina. Now the Violacea, I adore the fragrance of, it's very cinnamony. The Samira has a very cinnamony but floral fragrance. So I was kind of expecting that floral side to come from the Bellina, and this Bellina has flowered and it's kind of got a slightly sweet lemony fragrance. It doesn't remind me of Fruit Loops as a lot of people say it does. It, it, instead, it kind of reminds me a little bit of lemon curd, I guess, but with a floral edge. It's a very beautiful fragrance. It's not particularly strong. I would say the Violaceas that I have are stronger. So I don't know if this red apple variety is any different from the standard Bellina colour forms, um, obviously in terms of appearance it is, but I don't know if the fragrance is any different. So I may well try and track down a standard Bellina form and see if we can notice any difference in the fragrances. But it is very beautiful and I love the foliage and the leaves. I love how round and lily pad like they can be and so beautiful and glossy. So that is the Phalaenopsis Bellina red apple variety. Next up, we have an imposter. This actually obviously isn't a orchid. This is a pinguicula, and this is the pinguicula tina cross, which is a very common cross of pinguicula that you can often find in garden centers. And we had five flowers up until recently, but we have lost one. However, it is now starting two more little buds in there, I can see. You can just see one starting in there, and then one starting in there. So it's flowering incredibly prolifically at the moment and I've just managed to get a fungus gnat that it's killed stuck to me. So I'm gonna give that back for it to eat. I don't want, oh it's, oh, it's gross. Uh, I don't wanna be stealing its dinner. They're funny, they're not that sticky. I think they must only become sticky when the fungus gnat sits for a while and then it's like, oh yummy, fungus gnat. It's a really huge pinguicula and I did just wanna show you it because they do have incredibly beautiful flowers as well as providing pest control and they're so incredibly easy to grow. So I just thought I'd include this if for anyone who's interested in them. I won't spend too long on it, but it does have very pretty flowers. Next up is my Cylogeny Ocratia, uh, which also goes by Cylogeny Natida. This is a really beautiful Cylogeny that usually flowers in the spring, but it unexpectedly put out extra growths and matured two flower spikes um, very early on. So we've got a second one here, just behind the first, which has, by the looks of it, seven buds that I can count. And they form in these kind of sheets. 
that you often have to peel away because they can actually get stuck in these, I've found. Something really interesting about the Cilogeny Eucratia is that it actually produces its flower spike just as the new growth is beginning to form, so you straight away know whether you're going to get a spike or not. As you can see, I've got it planted in a uh, basket, which is supposed to be used for organising uh, shelf space. However, this is kind of a sprawly orchid and I couldn't really find a pot that it would fit into. So it's in this and it seems to enjoy it actually. It's in a mixture of bark and sphagnum moss. This one has very, very dainty white flowers with a beautiful kind of egg yolk, yellowy orange colour uh, middle in the lip and column there. It's a really stunning flower. It kind of, I don't know why, but it kind of reminds me of a zebra. Um, just in the shape of the, the flower, I don't know why. Um, but it's so, so beautiful, so dainty, and it's actually very uh, glisteny. You probably can't see it in this light because it's a very rainy day at the moment and I'm having to film in, uh, away from my grow room because the, the noise of the fans and the rain is just too much in there. Uh, but the one thing I would say about this, which is the most attractive feature, is the fragrance. This flower doesn't last very long. At the moment, this bloom is surprising me. It's been in bloom about a week and a half, and I don't remember it lasting this long last time, so we're definitely doing well. But it smells like incredibly floral bubblegum. It's so overpoweringly sweet, and it really does have that bubblegum edge, but with floral undertones. It's just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, incredibly powerful, and it does fill up the whole grow room and the whole corner of the grow room that it's in anyway. Uh, it's a really, really beautiful fragrance, and I would definitely recommend it alone uh, for this feature. I'm not too fussed about many other Cilogenies, but this one is definitely a keeper. My Cristata might be going some point soon, um, but this one is so much easier to grow. It's so much more rewarding. It's put out a second lot of blooms for me this year. It bloomed back in, I think, March, maybe maybe February at the beginning of the year. And it's very unusual, apparently, for it to put out a second lot of blooms. So I wouldn't expect this as standard, but it obviously decided now was the right time. So hopefully we will still get some more blooms in the spring. But for now, we can enjoy these beautiful flowers. Next up, and this is a very proud moment for me, we have the first flowering of one of my Phalaenopsis seedlings. So this is the Phalaenopsis Joshua Owen Ginsberg, which is a cross between Bellina and Venosa. And it's a very different flowering to what I was expecting, but it is a seedling, and so seedling variation does obviously play a, a very large role in the flower outcome. And it's got this beautiful kind of purplish, striping and then like a mottling on the petals here that reminds me almost of a butterfly wing the way that they flare back it's a really interesting shape I really really love it and it's got a very nice fragrance it's very citrusy actually um, I would describe it as sort of citrusy and a little bit uh, floral rosy fragrance not particularly fruity um, but it's a really, really beautiful flowering um, from quite a small orchid, actually. So I got this one from a seedling where it just had uh, two leaves and put out a few more. And now it's bloomed for me. So I'm super, super happy with the bloom outcome. And it's just a really, really pretty and unusual flowering, I think. And I quite enjoy it. I don't know what you guys think but it's definitely one that I'd recommend to people. It's been quite an easy one to flower. The size of the flower, I was thinking it was gonna be very small because it produced a very small and spindly spike uh, considering it is still quite a young plant. But no, it's actually doing really well and it's putting out quite a strong fragrance. And it's got all these almost like metallic glittery hints to it, which are really appealing and I really enjoy. So that is the Phalaenopsis Joshua Irwin Ginsberg. The next orchid that we have in bloom for September is the Phalaenopsis Tzu Chiang Tetralix crossed with LD Bear Queen. This is a beautiful hybrid which resembles the Tetraspis very much in shape of the flower. We've got these gorgeous little flowers clustered on top, quite a long spike, and it's actually growing a leaf at the same time as well as lots of roots, so it's a very happy, very vigorous orchid. The flowers themselves are kind of metallic 
bronzy mauve. They're really beautiful. I love the shape. I love the shape on a Phalaenopsis. Very slightly fragrant, but it's nothing overwhelming or that you would notice particularly unless you really sniff the flower. The shape and the cluster of blooms is the most appealing feature for me of this orchid blooming. And although the flowers are small, we have several of them at once, so I think that that more than makes up for it. They're just the cutest little blooms and I'm really happy with them. Next up we have some really stunning Dendrobium Phalaenopsis and I've just tried to change the setup around a little bit to show you the colour of these a little bit better. So this is the Dendrobium Phalaenopsis Snow Jade, I believe it's called, which is a beautiful almost uh, creamy green Denphal with a, a lovely contrasting mauvey pink lip with little hints of green and lilac in there. It's a really beautiful Dendrobium Phalaenopsis. Not particularly fragrant, maybe a slight kind of grassy scent but nothing particularly to write home about but what you certainly notice about this one is the beautiful display that it puts on so we've currently got one bud just opening and one bud still to open but at the moment we have nine flowers open on that next to this one we have the really interesting and much more compact growing Dendrobium phalaenopsis. No ID that I picked up from Lidl actually, reduced, and it wasn't in the best shape, but we've brought it back to health. What really attracted me to it was the apple green center, which is really unusual to see on a lot of orchids, um, with the very lovely contrasting purple edging on the uh, petals and sepals and the lip. But what's really striking about this for me is the fuzzy green lip. Uh, obviously, you do get that kind of fuzz on Denfowls, but not necessarily to the same extent. Whereas with this, you can really see clearly how fuzzy the center is. And it's so, so pretty. As I said, it's much more compact growing than some of the other Denfowls. You do definitely get a variation. These did go outside over summer and you can see that I've got some sunburn on the older growth of the snow jade there. But it seemed to enjoy it. Unfortunately our summer was very short this year so it came in quite quickly um, towards the end of August. And then I've, it's been under my artificial lights, the Gemma LED grow lights in my little converted wardrobe. Um, so it's flowered completely under LED lights. Um, same with this one, they both spiked and flowered under the LED lights. They did enjoy it outside while it was warm, but it just didn't stay warm enough in the UK for them for them to be out for very long. So that is the Dendrovium Phalaenopsis Snow Jade. And I will put the name of this one up on screen when I track it down again. Next up we have the Oncidium Twinkle, and this certainly isn't a complete flowering but I thought I'd show you that it had decided to flower a couple of its spikes early and just show you the multitude of spikes that the rest of the plant has. So including the ones that are flowering, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, spikes all together on this plant so it's really become quite the twinkle forest in there i've got three twinkles and they're all kind of getting to this stage beautiful fragrance of sweet kind of sugar syrup mixed with a little bit of vanilla it does remind me of candy floss quite a lot they're really beautiful they take after the sotoanum in the little beautiful um contrasting lip colors that they have um i have a horrible feeling that I mixed up two divisions in this because we've got some quite pink flowers and some that are a little bit more whitish brown. Um, these are fading a little bit but yeah I just have this horrible feeling that I bought three discounted twinkles at once and I repotted them immediately and I had to divide a lot of them because they had a lot of rot and they had a lot of pseudobulbs clustered on top of other pseudobulbs and the pseudobulbs underneath were all rotting so I ended up dividing them and putting them back into the same containers and they've just sprung to life and grown so incredibly vigorously but I just have this feeling that maybe I mixed up a division I'm not sure um, 
but yeah it'll be a surprise when all my twinkles flower if we have multiple different color twinkles in the pot um, but it'll certainly add to the display and you can see that we're in for quite a display over the next few weeks with this little guy it's been working on its spikes for a little while obviously they do produce a huge amount of flowers per spike so it takes them a i'd say probably a couple of months to actually from the start of the spike to maturing um don't mind the the brown tips on the twinkle i seem to get them quite a lot um i've treated them with antifungals and it doesn't seem to make any difference i don't think there's any consensus um on spotting on oncidiums in general uh, lots of people say fungal but i do treat with a systemic antifungal as a preventative measure and it doesn't seem to help at all so <laughs> there you go i just chop them off as they appear uh, it doesn't really harm the plant at all it's just um a little bit annoying visually but there you go that is my early twinkle branches and uh, we've got some later twinkle branches still to come on this one last but certainly by no means least we have the oncidium or cambria i believe it was um called on the pot cheyenne or cayenne i'm not entirely sure i bought it with a label but the label wasn't very very worn um and has since been misplaced but it definitely said either cheyenne and i did find a reference on a european seller website to the cheyenne and i can't find it again um or cayenne maybe but maybe that was just me interpreting it as like cayenne pepper it's such a beautiful oncidium intergeneric hybrid really gorgeous i can't resist red oncidiums huge huge flowers slightly fragrant slight sweet um floral fragrance nothing particularly overpowering but very very pleasant and it's created such a huge huge display for me we've actually got another spike that it's currently working on as well so yeah it's um i really like having spikes more pendant rather than staking but maybe this display would have been better staked uh, because it's absolutely huge we've got 13 flowers there on one spike and they are massive this is my only oncidium intergeneric that did well in semi-hydro it's an incredibly vigorous grower just adore it and i would definitely recommend it for anybody um it's just one of those intergeneric hybrids that you do pick up in garden centers and i'll just show you the root system of the plant you can see we repotted this together um, a few months ago and it's an incredibly incredibly vigorous grower and just took off uh, it, it loves semi-hydro um, my only oncidium type that does love semi-hydro uh, but I'll take it thank you so much for watching this what's in bloom video today which has recapped some of the blooms from september and i do hope that you enjoyed this video and i do apologize for the slightly poorer lighting um potentially it's a very very gloomy dark day here lots of rain and it's just not not a great lighting situation at the moment but i hope that you've still been able to enjoy this video and if you have enjoyed it then give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and i will see you guys later Bye.